Hello and welcome to Dr. Rick Fizzle here and today I'm going to talk to you a lot about the use of pyridoxine which is which is the same as vitamin B6. Okay, so so first of all whereabouts do we get this vitamin from? We get it from chicken. So right that list here. Chicken. We also get it from things like fish and eggs. Fish. Eggs. Pretty bright up here actually. It's vitamin B6, pyridoxin. Okay, so so we get it from from fish, eggs, and chicken, and we also get it from fruit and veg as well, and, and some cereals. So fruit and veg, cereal. Okay, so um, so, so what is actually the use of this vitamin? Well, it's used to in the production of neurotransmitters and hormones and red blood cells. So I'll write NT for neurotransmitters. Um, hormones red blood cells. Okay, so, so that's three uses of it. So, right, right, so basically from this what we can tell that neurotransmitters are associated with the brain because it's involved with like the communication system between neurons and stuff. So, so I shouldn't really have said brain, I should have said nervous system in general. Because as, as you should have seen from one of my last videos uh, on the neurons, that, that that's sort of how the body's electrical impulse system actually works and communicates with, with, with the rest of it sort of thing. Okay, so that's what neurotransmitters are associated with. So we instantly know that it's involved with the nervous system because of this production of neurotransmitters. Uh, hormonal system, again, that's another communication system. So, so we know that this particular vitamin is associated with communication systems around the body. Uh, red blood cells obviously transport oxygen to the muscles, so it shouldn't be too hard to imagine that deficiency symptoms is muscle weakness. Um, I'll write that down here, muscle weakness. And the reason why that's quite obvious, well to me anyway, it, it's just because red blood cells are used to carry oxygen in the haemoglobin, and, and obviously respiration actually uses oxygen as one, of the, um, as one of the reactants, if you like, for the reaction. Okay, so... Oh, obviously, if the, if the muscle cells don't have enough um, oxygen to actually respire, then you're going to suffer some muscle weakness because of that. Um, and, and there's also some other ones, such as depression and poor memory. Obviously, poor memory, again, is because it affects the brain due to the neurotransmitter production. Um, so, poor memory. And you've also got uh, depression as well. And, and, and depression, again, is, is just sort of a psychological thing, well, which essentially is, is sort of involved with the communication system, because if you like to press your communication system isn't going to work perhaps as well as it would do otherwise. Okay, so, so there's, there's, a few sort, there's a few sort of deficiency symptoms, I should probably write deficiency up there, so there's deficiency, um, so I'll write sources just to put a few headings in, and use. Okay, so how much of this vitamin do we need? Well, well, for this particular vitamin, it's 1.3 milligrams. So I'll write that up here. 1.3 mg. I'll write RDA up here, which is recommended daily amounts, amount or allowance. I'm not entirely sure. I have to double check that. Um, uh, okay, okay. So that's that's sort of primarily a lot of the uses. There's also protein metabolism, which takes place in the liver, um, and and there's over a hundred enzyme control reactions. Well, what we can tell from enzyme control reactions is obviously enzyme is a protein, so so it, it's associated with protein production. Obviously, um, over a hundred enzyme control reactions that, that this is actually used for. So, so that enzyme control rea reactions can be anabolic or catabolic. I can discuss that with you. I don't think uh, anabolic is like where it actually builds up smaller molecules into bigger ones, and catabolic is just where it's broken down bigger ones into smaller ones. Um, uh, I'll try not to get, give too many examples of those because it's primarily about the specific vitamin as opposed to um, the use of enzymes. Okay, so, so so what actually can this help help treat? It can actually help treat autism apparently. Like, 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 so remember the rule I said before, which is generally a rule with vitamins. I'm not, I don't really understand why, but but the, but the, the sort of general rule is is that if something like negatively affects something, it can also be used to it, it can also be used in a positive way primarily. So, so for example. So supposing this is used in, this actually deficiently causes poor memory, it can actually be used to help the memory, um, so, well, which, which can help in like, autism treatment and stuff. Um, 
and, 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 and like again, you don't know too much detail, but but you can usually sort of work out these types of things by what what is the target organ, because you know that there's going to be there's going to be like symptoms associated with the brain by this um, communication system neurotransmitters, because it's used to produce neurotransmitters. You know that's going to be associated with brain type conditions, so, so that's that's obviously how you can how you can like like, like like come up with a hypothesis, if you like, which is like theory of, of, of the fact that autism may be able to be cured by this, and then you, and scientists investigate it and try and sort of sort of produce a link. And obviously, in, in this case, there's some evidence to support this because I found that on the website. Um, uh, uh, okay, so that's primarily a lot of the uses and the sources with um, this, um, but it needs to actually be used in association with magnesium as well in order to treat au autism. Magnesium. Um, I, I thought I'd discuss with you that the function of magnesium in plants. I'll probably do a separate video for magnesium in animals. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. And in the next one, I'll be going into B7, which is known as biotin. Hope you enjoyed this video. See you then. Goodbye.